up, dudes. I have a book here. I've had this book for many years, and this is the first little journal I had. It's full of drawings and sketches and notes from all the drug experiences I've had. When I first started doing drugs, I, I would write about it in here. I've never shared any of this stuff with anyone, and I felt like now is a great time to share some of it because I don't use this anymore. I've been taking different substances medically and recreationally for a few years now, and I write down every dose that I do, the day that I do it, and a little note if anything specific happens during that experience. So I have all of that journal down for the past three years, and I wanted to share exactly my drug diary. This is my trip book, and my drug diary is written down on my phone, so I'm gonna share all that with you so you guys can see exactly what doses I take, the days in between I take each dose, and uh, hopefully that'll get, give you a little insight into how I do drugs, because I don't just take them to take them. I like to make a mental note of every dose, every date, so then I can look back in my history and, and find out if anything goes wrong in life, what it could have been. Like, I can look back and be like, maybe it was taking too much of that, or maybe it was trying that drug specifically. So I wanted to share that and share some of this. So I started this maybe when I turned 22 or 23. I think when I turned 20, 22 or 23. I'll post pictures of this on the side so you can see what I'm looking at. First page says, I'm looking for a tattoo artist to give me tattoos of clouds. When I trip, I can watch them move. I don't know if that's the case. I don't know if that actually will happen, but uh, that's what I wrote down. Get high with friends. A lonely trip is a trip wasted because you just wish your friends were there. And then I wrote setting setting because that's important. Yeah, I mean, I still believe that. That is very true. The people you think about the most are the ones that you that need you to spend time with. That way you can finally make your mind be quiet. Enjoy the extra thinking space. I don't know what I don't know what that means. I don't know what I, I don't know what any of this stuff means. But uh, hopefully you guys can make some sense of it. Television isn't getting any better, so don't watch it. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Television hasn't improved. People with sunglasses are the aliens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here I drew my little chameleon. This guy is uh, now tattooed on my body, right there. So I, I don't know, I, I guess I got it done. But I, I drew it here first. Pain is temporary. I'm trying to find the interesting stuff. Have fun. I think Drew probably drew me this one because it's a, it's a pot leaf smoking some pot. Drew, don't be a bum. Oh, yeah, there you go. It's Drew, he wrote, he, he wrote me, uh, drew me a bum. Thanks, Drew. Scared? Weed makes you paranoid because you're on edge and vulnerable when on it. Other drugs make you more aware of your surroundings and destroy your ego. I somewhat still agree with this. I think smoking weed makes you more paranoid than eating weed because I don't really get paranoid, paranoid eating it. It does slow you down a little bit and can make you vulnerable. So I, I still, I guess I understand why I read this. The other drugs I was referring to is like Delics because they make you more aware of your surroundings and you're just more alert. Shadows are fun to play with. <laughs> Give your other senses a chance. Dude, some of this is great. You should really drop acid on the beach just to listen. I've done that. I've done that many times. I love to ruin smooth sand and making it messy. Uh -huh. I was probably on edibles when I wrote most of this stuff because that's the most of the experimenting I've done. You'll see in my drug diary when I when I share it where most of the stuff came from. And here I've been like complaining about pollution. Like this was years ago, you know, before before kind of Extinction Rebellion, before climate change was really talked about a lot. I was already complaining about this stuff. The giant chimneys that pollute smoke into the UK and then probably the rest of the world, they need to go. We need to get rid of those coal plants. They don't don't belong here anymore. Hello. You can say no, but can you find me some LSD? <laughs> Eat shroomies, ask questions later. I probably can't still agree with that. I can't promote psychedelics. <laughs> but these are notes for myself, you know? They're not notes for other people. No one, no one else was ever meant to see this book. And I'm sharing it now because I'm sharing it now. Come ride on my motorbike, take some 2CI, and have <laughs> butt sex with me because the world is ending. <laughs> <laughs> That's another message from Drew. It's just a, a decided joke. <laughs> so back when I was interested in shoes, I wanted to make a shoe that had a smiley face on the bottom so that when you left a footprint, there would be a smiley face there. <laughs> Roads are boring colors to keep you sad so you buy more. We're looking for intelligent life form to take with us to make experiments. I heard that in a trip once and I, it stuck with me. Open your mind to the possibility that everything that you know could be false. 2016 planner, fly to Bali, Boat to Gili Chuangan, lived there for a while, fly to Thailand, Kofi Fi, Chiang Mai. I did all of that. I didn't do it in 2016, but I did all of that in 2017. So I manifested it way before, and I just had this note. I've got a lot of like personal messages here from friends that I've been hanging out with, and I maybe I shouldn't share them. I mean, they're very personal. 1P LSD, very melty. I tried 1P LSD one time, and I went to a Grimes show. I think Grimes is now dating Elon Musk, so that's kind of weird. 
But uh, I went to one of her shows on acid. It was one PLSD though, and I was just testing it out for the first time. And yeah, it's very melty. Her show was very trippy to begin with, but I was like confined in a crowd and I couldn't really dance because I was like really overwhelmed by everything drooping. It is very much like LSD, but uh, I feel slightly different. The visuals are very, very similar too. And one PLSD at the time was legal, so that's why I did it. Here's a little drawing that I did. It's kind of cute. I like it. So I wrote this after I just smoked DMT. Uh, it welcomes you back immediately. It wants to show you everything. There's so much love inside. I didn't go very far with DMT. I only tried it once. But um, it felt like I'd been there before. It felt like I was returning home. And it's full of love. Whatever's inside there is full of love. Uh, here's just Totoro. All right, here's a colorful one, covered in like little positive notes. I'll put it on the screen so you can read it, but it says, don't worry so much in colors. And just a bunch of like nice little messages. If you want to pause the screen, you can read all this. A bunch of little mushroom drawings. Listen to the way birds talk to each other. They chirp a few lines and then every other bird will chirp the same thing back. Sometimes they add their own line at the end. So I was high on edibles trying to figure out how birds worked, <laughs> how they communicated. I'm not very good at this, no one is, just keep going. It will always show you what you need to... It will always show you what you need, not what you want. Yeah, that's psychedelics. I see you. That's a line from Avatar. Uh, I think I was on acid when I watched that. Here's some little mushroom drawings that I did. The dude in the bottom left, the eyeball guy. I still haven't got that tattooed, but I'm gonna get tattooed. I've done many, many variations of that. This right here is a drawing that Anna did for me. Uh, I guess I could show you this because it's not that personal, but she made it for me when we were out in Bali eating mushrooms together. Go back inside, Jess. <laughs> I have to change the world because no one else is going to. I still believe it, but I feel like a lot of people are also trying to do it, so it's not just me now. A lot of people are trying. Elon Musk, he's got the money to do more than I could ever do, but uh, I'm going to keep trying, you know? I've got I've got a camera. I know, I know how to communicate with people. I know how to get my words out, so I think I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing. Here's a couple of drawings. It's a technical drawing that someone made me when I was at French Tech. I got roofied and I got M-bombed at that thing. French Tech was hectic for me. I'm not really a tech head, but uh, I wanted to go for the experience and it was wild. <laughs> this right here is a drawing that I did in Thailand when I was with uh, Steph Lee. We both just sat at a temple drawing together and that's what I made. All right, again, I was like manifesting going to Asia with this one. I drew this years before I ever went there, so I'm happy that I did because it worked. Uh, here's a Changa drawing. This is one of my favorites, actually. Uh, Victoria kissed it in the middle, so I, I just kind of left it there and drew around it. I didn't know what else to do. <laughs> Trying to imagine all that stuff, but moving, flowing around. That's what it was like in the Changa world. Here's some, some acid scribbles that I can't really make make sense of. Some of it says Peskodin, Peskodin Koi. That's just fish, fish, tree. <laughs> I think I was trying to communicate with my sister. This one is a little drawing that I did when Stephanie Lee made me sad one time. I used to just draw whenever Steph made me sad. She made me sad a lot, but I also made her sad a lot, so. It's probably why we're not together! <laughs> hey Helen, I wish you were here, dude. Yep, I've done a lot of traveling without my sister, and I, I, I always miss her when I'm, when I'm gone. Uh, I'm a witch. I haven't done a trip report for this trip, but I took four or 500 micrograms at Azora the second or third year I went there, and um, <laughs> yeah, it was messy. Uh, <laughs> I turned into a witch, and I was trying to fly. Here's another little mushroom drawing. I have no idea who made this one. I can't tell whose style it is. So whoever drew this... Oh, wait. It says Jason. I knew who drew this. I know who did this. This was... This was Joey, I think, because he writes in the style. I like it. I haven't even seen this one yet. Nice. Thank you, Joey. This is kind of a scale on how sound works when you're under the influence of psychedelics. You take a microdose, your hearing gets wider. You can hear more, you can hear more more in between sounds. Um, it's easier to make out layers in music. And then you go beyond that, you're tripping. You go, you're quite, you're going quite far. And then beyond that, it's scary. You start hearing things that maybe aren't even there. Meow, meow. I don't know who drew that one. Who draws cats? Might be Marina, I have no idea. This one's another weird drawing that I did under some 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 substance. I don't really know which one. Mushroom picking guide. Wow. I wrote my mushroom picking guide in here years before I ever filmed it. And I'm so glad that I did film it because it turned out great. A lot of people watched it. It's helped a lot of people. If you want to watch the mushroom picking guide, by the way, link in description. It's a picking guide for Liberty Caps. So they grow in the UK and Europe and I think North America in some places. This one, this one was drew by my friend Savannah. Uh, I gave her a purple pencil and a green sharpie, that's all I had. And I just said, draw something. So she, she made this this lady. 
with our grapes for hair. It's weird because the day before, me and Victoria went to this um, this Greek kind of food festival thing, where a lady was giving us grapes. Uh, we had a we had a, we had a moment with this grape lady, <laughs> and then I didn't tell Savannah this, but she just drew this for me the next day, and it kind of blew my mind a little bit because it is the grape lady. Like Savannah is, she's on another level. You know? She's she's real spiritual without even knowing. She's I don't know. She's a uh, She's very different. If you want to check out some of Savannah's art, by the way, she's amazing. Um, she started selling commission, commissioned art, so if you want to check it out, link in the description to her art profile and her regular profile. She's, you've seen her in my videos before, she's amazing. And then View and I is back. It's funny because View and I is dead now. <laughs> but uh, I brought back the channel, that's how I ended the book. Uh, flip. This is going back in a storage, dude. It's been in storage for a few years now. I'm leaving it there. I'm gonna get a new journal and I'm gonna write properly. I'm gonna write an actual diary. Let's move on to my drug diary, my my doses. I hope that was interesting. I hope you're still watching. If you are, leave a like on the video, smash like, smash like, subscribe, subscribe for new content. No, seriously, please, please press the like button and also turn on the notification bell if you subscribe because that will notify you when I make new videos because 480,000 people don't get notifications that I make videos. There's about 20,000 of you that have notifications turned on, so please, Please turn on those notifications because otherwise you're never going to know when I post a video. Because YouTube doesn't actually show you the video. Unless it gets like a million views in the first day, they're not going to show it to you. So, thank you if you have notifications on. I appreciate you. Let's move on. This is the interesting bit. This is the bit that I really wanted to share. So all the, all the substances I've done, so this is a quick list of things that I've taken. Weed edible, MDMA, MDA, LSD, mushrooms, hash edibles, speed, 2CB, 4ACO DMT, DMT, T5 by Hawaiian baby woodruff seeds. I've been roofied once. I've been embalmed once. I've done one PLSD and I've smoked Changa. I think that's everything that I've taken. There might be some other stuff in between, but I, I don't remember. Let's move on to this is the first year I started recording this. It's my drug diary for 2017. The year before that, I had 41 trips. That was the first year I started tripping. I wasn't writing down the dates or the doses, but 41 trips. And then year two, I had 16 trips. Uh, yeah, the math doesn't really make sense. Ignore all that though, we're going to move on to 2017 where I actually started writing down exactly my doses. So this might be a bit intimidating looking at it like this. It's quite scary for me looking at this. This is everything that I've done. Uh, and now I'm sharing it with the world. I don't think anyone else has ever done this. Have you seen on YouTube anyone sharing their exact doses for three years? Like, I've written it all down. I've written down everything. January 1st. I'm just gonna brush through this. Mushroom microdose with hash oil. I was combining things, seeing what worked. Low doses, obviously, because were, I didn't know what to expect. Didn't know what, what, what was gonna happen. Edible low dose. This is all my January stuff. So I think I was probably in America if I was, do, if I was doing edible. Acid weak, two grams-ish of mushrooms. I was wild, dude. I was combining things. <laughs> Flip. Uh, acid weak. Weed lemonade. I was definitely in California. 100 milligrams, says it on the bottle. Legal as well. So uh, lemonade, 100 milligrams again. Lemonade. Vegan edibles, mushrooms, edibles, 120 milligrams, edible, edible, mushrooms, three grams, edibles, edible, 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 edible. So the thing I do with drugs is I take one substance, but I binge it. So I might do two or three weeks of edible straight, and then I'll take a long break, and then I'll move on to something else. And hopefully you can see that in the listing, that's kind of how I operate. I don't like to combine drugs. I don't like to do two things in the same kind of period. For trippers especially, I'll leave roughly two weeks between them so that my tolerance can get back. February, edibles, edibles, mushrooms, three grams, edible, 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 700 milligrams, insane, not fun. I filmed this, link is in the description. Me and Drew, we did 800 milligrams each. I don't think I managed to finish my last edible, so that's why I wrote out 700 milligrams, because that's roughly how much I did. That was the, the one and only time that I've ever YT'd on weed. YT'ing is kind of where you just get too far and you puke. That's the point I got to, it wasn't fun. <laughs> March, edibles, 50 milligrams. <laughs> so yeah, I took a few, a little break there. Mushrooms, two grams, and edible 30 milligrams. Mushroom microdose, mushrooms, one gram. Mushroom microdose, microdose. Edibles, edibles, edibles. So from between the mushrooms and the edibles right there, there's like 10 days in between. Edibles, edibles, edibles. Half a gram of mushrooms, edibles, edibles. Half a gram of mushrooms. So you see how the dose is kind of getting lower and lower there. I guess I was scared after that 800 milligrams one, so I kind of slowed down. All right, and then a seven week tolerance break. See, I write this stuff down, dude. It's clever. It's good to be scientific with these drugs because then you can show people and be like, hey, I'm not particularly messed up. I'm very healthy. My mind is clear. These are what I take. These are the dates that I've taken them. I've taken them for years and I'm fine. You know, I'm not dead. I haven't come close to death. I haven't 
harm myself with the substances I take. Right now, sorry, I'm talking so fast because I'm like passionate about this. This is this is what I study, you know? I study psychedelics and I study weed and I experiment on myself because it's illegal to experiment in a lab right now. So I'm doing it, I'm a scientist. It's fun to share this kind of stuff. I've been wanting to share this for so long and this video is kind of the perfect one to talk about it. I think I went to Asia during that time, so that's why I was sober because I don't like to get high when I'm traveling just because the laws are different. I, I don't know how the police are gonna behave. And I wanna be alert, you know, I don't, I don't wanna be inebriated. I don't, want, I don't wanna be intoxicated. As soon as I get back, 50 milligram edible, half a gram of mushrooms. I went straight to a festival. So this is 270 micrograms of LSD a week. And then the next day I took 660 micrograms of LSD. I don't know how correct that is. I think the tabs were bunk. So I would maybe half those doses. So the first day I probably did 135 micrograms and then the day after that I did 300 because I had to double it to kind of get the same effect. I filmed that so if you want to see that video link is also in the description I might do a little thing on the top here that video is called taking LSD for 48 hours straight so if you want to watch that I filmed it all it's all there see I'm, I'm on top of this you know I'm, I don't just do this for fun edible edible mushrooms mushrooms mushroom 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 microdoses edibles microdose edible edible we're into July 2017 now Edibles, mushrooms, um, LSD, a pinch of Changa. I, I tried a tiny bit of Changa for the first time. Mushroom microdose, LSD, 10 micrograms. So I microdosed LSD there. I made edibles, licked the ball, super stoned. <laughs> I love that I wrote that down. 200 milligram hash edibles, 100 milligram hash edibles. I do prefer hash. I think I went on a road trip when I did all these. So I was like somewhere in the middle of, of Europe taking all these hash edibles that I made. A 200 milligram hash edible, 100 milligrams with Hagen and like my friends. 10 micrograms acid in Switzerland. That was so beautiful. We were tripping in the Alps. Well, I'm not tripping, we were on a microdose in the Alps, but it felt good, you know, it felt like it was the right place to do it. I'm sorry if I'm talking really fast. Uh, I'm trying to slow down, <laughs> breathe. So looking through this list, it's like, I'll let you pause at any moment you want. Anything in particular that stands out, I'm gonna talk about it. LSD felt roughly like 200 micrograms. I didn't know the dose. I didn't even test it. So that's not smart. You should always test your LSD because if you're just getting it from any person, you can't trust that person. You don't know where it came from. And you need to know for sure that it is LSD because if it's a research drug, it can kill you. You can overdose on research chemicals. LSD cannot kill you. You cannot overdose on it. It's important, you've got to test it. So use a reagent, test your, test your stuff, test everything you take. So four ACO, this is August now. I think I'm at a festival. Four ACO, DMT and two CP. Um, 0 0.2 milligrams of TCB. That sounds like a nice little experience. I didn't write down the dose for the 4 ACO, so I probably didn't know the dose. It's probably a small amount though. But two grams of Mexican mushrooms, and then LSD 450 micrograms, 350 micrograms after the come down. Trails were heavy, but other features weren't. I don't know if those doses are correct. I doubt they were that high. I don't really understand why I wrote that down that, that way. It's hard to say. It's hard to say what happened there. I was at a festival, took some LSD, and I wrote down that. But uh, I don't think that's correct, because um, I don't usually go that high. Two grams of mushrooms, libby caps, mushroom microdose. Hash edible, 200 milligrams, 200, 300 milligrams. Uh, this was a binge right here, you can tell. Did a whole week, just heavy, heavy doses. Weed lemonade, 85 milligrams. I love weed lemonade, it's my favorite. It's so good, can't get it here in the UK, but I love it. 100 micrograms of acid in September. Edibles, holy, this is mad. This makes me look like I'm a complete stoner. I've got two full months there. August and September where I'm just high every day. There's a few spaces in between, but that's a lot of weed. Uh, the doses, I always go roughly 100 milligrams. Uh, weed lemonade though, love that stuff. Wow, 6th of October, 250 micrograms of LSD, purest LSD I've ever had. I think I was in the desert when that happened. Um, probably filmed it. If I could find it, I'll put the link in the description. <laughs> really pure stuff. I cried a lot that, that, that night. It was very strange. My friend had to drive me home from this from this free pipe because I couldn't, obviously couldn't drive. I hadn't come down at that point. So he drove us all home. And then edibles, a lot of edibles. I was probably in California for all of this. LSD again. So you get the point. I take a lot of edibles. These are the doses I thought I'd share with you guys. And then here we go, we're back in the UK. Mushroom microdoses. This is about mushroom season, roughly around that time. It's December, so I probably picked a bunch of mushrooms. And I was microdosing. So microdosing for me, I take one Liberty Cap. Uh, I'll put it on the screen right here. This is what a Liberty Cap looks like. It's very small. Um, if you've seen my mushroom picking guide. Oh, hey Jasper. How long have you been out here? <laughs> so if you've watched my mushroom guide, you see how small Liberty Caps are, they're very small. I take one of those when I microdose. I don't microdose them anymore because I was using it to treat depression, and I feel like I did it. I, com I completely did it. So yeah, these are all just mushroom microdoses. Um, I usually do five days on, two days off. So I'll do five days a week, one mushroom in the morning, and then two days where I don't have anything. 
mushroom micro mushroom micro mushroom microdose and 200 micrograms of LSD. Then game over. That's 2017 over. Uh, really hope this isn't boring for you guys. I hope this is something that you're interested in. And I, I, I recommend everybody that takes any kind of substances or medication, write it down. Write down the exact dose and the date that you do it. And then put a little note about how you felt. I think it's just really important. I think it's very useful. All right, let's move on to 2018. January, mushroom microdoses, obviously, because I was probably going through seasonal depression. Uh, Three-week tolerance break, good to know. And then back on to mushrooms. Mushroom two, two mushroom shakes, roughly 2.5 grams dried. I was in Indonesia for this, I think. I was on an island that doesn't have any police, and they just sell mushrooms there. So I had some mushroom shakes. Um, one gram mushrooms, zero effect. Yeah, that's kind of strange. We had some dried mushrooms that did no effect to us. The fresh mushrooms did, but the dried ones didn't. Time didn't exist for seven weeks. Many mushrooms were had, never above 2.5 grams, roughly. So I guess I just lost track of time. I think I was off the grid a little bit and I wanted to just not keep track of anything. I wasn't using my phone. I was just off grid with Cephali. We had a lot of fun. I'm sure you guys have seen those vlogs. I'm not gonna put those links in the description because it's just sad for me to watch them back because I do miss that time. And then we're coming back to March. So I think I'm back home in the UK now because I've got some weed again. March, 40 milligrams THC, 100 milligrams THC. 29th April, 100 micrograms clean. Clean, that's all I need to write, it's clean. I do love when I get a good acetate, dude. When it's just nice and wavy and I, I'm just frying balls a little bit. I like to fry. So it's good to find some good acid. Especially just edible, it's got a bit of acid in there. Um, I'll let you guys go through the list. Tolerance break, necessary. It's always good to take a break from all drugs. 10th to the 27th, 100 to 200 milligrams each day, alternating between three days, b between three different strains. Interesting time, fell behind on work, got sick on the 28th, probably food related, ate a stir fry when I shouldn't have. <laughs> I don't know what was in that stir fry. Yeah, that's all the notes I wrote for that one. June, did a lot of weed in June, fell behind on work. That sounds like me, yeah. It's all weed, that's all, that's all I did in July. Boom Festival, 100 milligram edible, a few week, a few week edibles, a few week edibles. Did some Mexican convenances and some changa. And then mushrooms, changa, 200 micrograms of LSD, watched a solar eclipse, very intense, come up, but I handled it well, beautiful. I'm glad I wrote all that, that was quite nice. The solar eclipse was beautiful, especially on LSD, really enjoyed that. And then changa and a bit of THC, um, encountered entities that were moving very fast and showing me things. I try to draw these guys. I'm gonna put a picture of them right here. This is kind of what I saw. If you imagine these little guys holding something in their hand and just flailing. They were doing like this interpretive dance where they were going like that. Showing me this object in their hands that kept on shifting. And it was happening so fast, there was many of them. I couldn't make any sense of it. So my camera filled up and I just lost like 10 minutes of footage. So I'm gonna have to repeat everything I just said. So these entities are moving really fast. And what they were showing me, it felt like the entities were the spirits of these, um, of the plants that I was smoking. So Changa is just smokable ayahuasca basically. And ayahuasca is made up of a, of a blend of different jungle vines and all sorts of things. So it felt like it was the spirit of those guys. Then July 29th, tiny bit of Changa, tiny bit of Changa. Nausea, Spongle sounded incredible. Hallucinations took the same speed as the music. It was nice. I, I think I cried during that that experience. Azora Festival now. Me and Steph did Boom Festival to Azora Festival. Back to back festivals. It was exhausting. I didn't go hard at Azora last year. I wanted to, but I, I didn't have the energy for it. So started off with 60 micrograms. Nice little introduction there. Um, August 1st, a deep hit of Changa. Faces lost all features except the eyes. Sounds got really loud and confusing coming from the people. All the tents and the fire turned into cartoon paintings. Very overwhelming, didn't mean, mean to take such a large hit. The pipe was passed to me and I didn't pack it. So a little story here. Me and my friends were in, in someone's tent and we were overlooking the festival and there was no music playing. It was just people talking and some guy came over. He was an American guy. He recognized me from YouTube. He told me all about himself and said that he was at Azora because of me, because of the videos that I made from last year. So we, we connected and then he was like, do you have a pipe to smoke some Changa? And I was like, yes, I do actually. I have this little pipe and I only allow people to smoke Changa out of it. No weed, no, nothing else. It's just a Changa pipe. So I was like, yeah, of course. So they packed it, passed it around. He took a hit, exhaled too early and then started talking afterwards. So obviously it didn't hit him very hard. My friend in the middle, I'm not gonna say the names cause I wanna like, uh, she took a deep hit, held it in and passed it to me. And then I took a deep hit, lit it, took a deep hit, and uh, I realized it was packed quite heavy and I started to c cough it up some of it because I'm not very good at handling smoke. Then she exhaled hers and I exhaled mine. And then, like, it came on real quick. The people over to the side of me, they didn't have any facial features. It, it just went smooth. They had eyes, but nothing else. 
and yeah, it was really beautiful, quite scary and overwhelming. Like I was shook up for a few hours after that because I was like, whoa. I just went from sober to, to tripping balls real quick and it comes down quite quick too. Um, I didn't pack it myself so I obviously didn't know how much was in there and I just blew me away that one did. I'm not very experienced with Changa so I'm still learning. Changa is one of those things that is quite hard to master and I'm definitely not very good at it yet. 240 micrograms of LSD and a little bit of Changa. Obviously I do high, higher doses at Azora so that was fine. I had plenty of people around me so I was, I was totally good. Two days after that did like a microdose pretty much, 30, 30 mic micrograms. Then we left Azora, went back to the UK, did a bunch of edibles, a whole bunch of edibles. 500 milligrams, way too strong, didn't realize we all tripped balls and fell asleep. <laughs> I don't know who gave me 500 milligrams or how, why I took 500 milligrams. Um, I don't recommend anybody goes that high. Uh, I would never go above 200 anymore because there's no reason to really. There's nothing beneficial above that, it just becomes uncomfortable. September, three to 17. <laughs> many, ed many edibles were had, very strong doses. I'd say 200 milligrams plus most days. Lost track of time and space, only just came down uh, three weeks later, taking a tolerance break now. Yeah, good, take a tolerance break, jeez. I don't know why I went so hard in September. I mean, my birthday's in the middle of that time, so I was probably just accelerating something. But flip, I wouldn't recommend anyone because anyone does any of these things that I do. Mushroom microdoses, first mushroom of the season. So it's mushroom season, this is when I filled my mushroom picking guide. And then I started writing down exactly how many liver caps I ate. So like 60, 60 uh, 16. 16, 50 lip caps. Spent the day walking along the mountains in the sun. Trip revolved around health and diet. Need more alive food. So I've been getting this message a lot, not to eat processed stuff and to only eat like live vegetables, like things that have been living. Like you are what you eat. If you want to feel alive, you've got to eat like plants because they, they are living organisms and then you eat them when they're fresh and then you feel alive. That's kind of the message I've been getting. I've been trying to do that more now, eating a lot more live fruit, foods, a lot of fruits. Microdosing mushrooms, of course. Then I started, I had four days of just doing high doses back to back to back to see what would happen. Yeah, I only did it four days, so I guess I got what I was looking for. We made the carrot cake with an ounce of trim. Super strong, I took a slice of it and then went to go watch a movie. Body wouldn't stop vibrating and I felt like my lower half was being torn apart. I couldn't watch the movie. I felt, I couldn't stop vibrating in the chair. The lower half of my body felt like it was being torn off of me. I was trapped on a rocket ship but I was losing my intestines and stuff. Like it was all just being ripped off. <laughs> that was very strong edible, I don't know why we did that. <laughs> I ate a slice in the airport right before going to Asia. And then we ended up missing the flight, so I was just really high at the airport and we had to go back home and nap. I was expecting to be on a flight, but I, I wasn't. <laughs> in the December I was in Asia, so I did some Kratom for the first time. And the Kratom video that I filmed is on my channel, link in the description down there. All the videos I talk about are down there. Yeah, the Kratom one, I got a lot of hate for that one because it got a lot of attention. If you say anything negative about Kratom, the entire Kratom community will destroy you. They won't leave you alone. All right, let's move on to 2019. I've done all this already. I just, I didn't, I lost the footage, so. <laughs> 0 0.5 grams of mush, three grams of mush, 2.5, three. So I was in Asia, it was rainy season. Mushrooms grow all year round in Indonesia, but during rainy season, they're not very potent because they grow too fast. Yeah, we just didn't get that, didn't get the highs we were looking for. Um, but then I took two bites of raw cacao, felt like a caffeine high without the jitters. So this is my first time trying raw cacao. I get it now, I get why people do it. Uh, it does feel like a lot like caffeine. No real negative side effects there. And then back to the UK, THC, THC. This pattern continued, took two days off. I went to Amsterdam to film a video uh, with truffles therapy. I did 44 grams of truffles, February 14th. That's Valentine's Day. <laughs> See, I'm single, so I don't, I, I don't know these things, but I spent Valentine's Day under the influence of 44 grams of truffles <laughs> with three supervisors. Oh, uh, tripsers, I should call them. Space holders. I, wow. I didn't even know it was February 14th. That's funny. Anyway, I made a video on this experience. Uh, if you want to see that, link in the description. Yeah, that one was intense for me emotionally. Like, I did it closed eye as well. So, Terence McKenna will be proud. That's the right way to do it, I think. When you're on doses that high, definitely. February 17th, back to the UK. 100 milligrams of THC. This pattern continued until March 12th. Desperate for a toler tolerance break, but have no one to ground me. So, I think I went a bit too deep. I went too deep with the edibles. I spent a whole month where I was just doing edibles. And it's because the shoulder pain that I was experiencing was really intense during that time. And I was trying to do do something to escape the pain and also treat it with the CBD. I guess I, I just didn't have anyone around to like stop me. So I just went really deep and probably didn't get any work done during that time. Okay, over, over to April. I started microdosing LSD. Had the confidence to converse with a police officer. I went to Extinction Rebellion. The first day I was there, I was on, I was on an LSD microdose. And I was going to go speak with these guys that were up in the trees in a hammock at Parliament Square. And they were surrounded by like cops. So. I went over, the cops came over to me and wouldn't let me talk to them, so I spoke to them instead. And this one guy was an Irish dude, and he was just, he was like younger than me, and just like, seemed like a completely normal guy. Like, I can't ignore the uniform, obviously, because I don't talk to cops. I, I refuse to look at a cop. I won't make eye contact with them. 
I won't speak to them. I don't treat them like civilians because I don't agree with who they work for. They work for big corporations and people with money. They don't, they don't work for the people. So I don't agree with them and I refuse to acknowledge them. This guy just seemed totally normal with the way he was speaking. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll talk. And because I was under the influence of a microdose, I had the confidence to just speak, to, speak with this guy, whereas I usually wouldn't. So I, I don't know, I found it very interesting. THC, LSD microdose. I kind of alternate between THC and microdosing. Usually with LSD microdoses, I won't do it. I don't do it often. I do it about three, I leave about three or four days in between because an LSD microdose will last 12 hours and then get a lot of work done. But then the, few, the days after that, I still feel motivated and happy and just awake. So I don't need to take it very often. I just take, take it intermediately. Is that the right word? I think so. And then a bunch of edibles, May 21st, a gram of mushrooms. I did that when I was hiking with my friend. And that's it. It's May 24th now. I've so, been sober for three days. Uh, I haven't been writing down my CBD though, so I should probably start doing that. So I can keep track of that also and uh, share those results. I hope that you found this interesting. That's my drug diary. That's the, my entire drug history. 2015 and 16, when I first started experimenting, I wasn't recording any of that. I didn't capture any of that. I didn't write it down. So I wish I had. All the experimental drugs that I'd done in that list earlier didn't keep track of any of that. So sadly, all that data is gone. But now I realize that I'm only doing LSD, mushrooms, weed, DMT. Those are the four that I kind of mess with now. I'm trying to learn about those the most. And obviously because labs can't do any of this research because it's illegal, I have to do it all myself to figure out the truth. In a way, I am a scientist, I am testing and experimenting on myself, I am the guinea pig, but also I'm using it to heal spiritually and learn and grow, you know? Grow! Um, these plants, these medicines, I wouldn't call them drugs. They're just substances that can be used medically and spiritually to help you become a better person. So that's why I take them personally. I do not recommend anybody else takes them. Please leave a like on the video. Like, subscribe, leave a comment. Tell me your drug history. I want to know what kind of things you guys take. Don't worry if you take something that's bad for you. I, I want to hear about it, because like, I don't take anything that can kill me. I want to know what other people do take, and what kind of doses they do, and how often they do it. And if you combine things, like, as you see on my list, I don't really combine drugs. Um, I don't combine anything because I, I want the benefits of that in individual thing, and I don't want to combine it with something else because the, rea the reaction is quite unpredictable usually. Yeah, I, uh, that's everything from me. Uh, please leave a comment, let me know what you take. And if you don't write down your doses, then you start. You should, you should start. It's very interesting because you can look back in your past and be like, if, you get, if, you, if you're experiencing something negative in the future, you can look back at the list and be like, maybe it was that thing that was doing the harm and you can stop taking that thing. That's kind of why I did it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for your time. I know this video is quite long, but I just wanted to share everything all in one go so that I can move on to something else. Um, next video on the channel is part two to the Extinction Rebellion thing. It was gonna come out sooner, but Extinction Rebellion haven't really done anything since all of that. I was expecting something else to happen, but nothing happened, so. That video is coming next. It's all edited, I just haven't finished it. It's not done. Subscribe if you're new here. Please turn on your notifications because I have 500,000 subscribers on the channel. 480,000 of those people don't have notifications turned on, so they don't even know when I post videos because YouTube won't tell them. So it's quite frustrating being a creator and having your followers just not know that you're even posting. Yeah, check out all the videos I talked about in the description. Check out merch. We've got some new merch coming this week, hopefully. And uh, links to that is in the description, Teespring. Uh, that's where I post my stuff. Shirts, hoodies, it's all down there. Here's some people wearing different things that we've made. All right, see you in the next video. Bye.